Now, what happens uniformly across the board when you have a lack of antioxidants? You have inflammation. Mm -hmm. Correct. Less mm -hmm. antioxidants, more inflammation. Mm -hmm. That clear. <clears throat> when you have more inflammation, what happens? The immune system of the body starts mobilizing. It sees that there's this source of inflammation in the body and the immune system's function is to mobilize and try to neutralize and stop whatever the inflammatory process is. Well, it's an interesting fact in the literature that the monocytes, which are the larger immune cells, actually have up to 80-fold more vitamin C in them than regular cells in the body. Now, I don't have proof of this, mm -hmm. but it's my hypothesis, and it fits well with the whole model, mm -hmm. is that the more inflammation you have, the more the monocytes come in to try to correct the vitamin C deficiency because they have such a high concentration. Okay. But what happens is the atherosclerosis that begins to develop is a defense mechanism run amok. If you deplete all the vitamin C and you haven't initiated what you need to do to get the vitamin C levels back, back up, up again, mm -hmm. the defense mechanism, the inflammation, stays there. Mm -hmm. The reaction of the immune system continues coming. It's not really successful in restoring the vitamin C concentration in the arterial wall. And then you get a whole cascade of immune cell reactions. The immune cells come in. After a limited period of time, the body does not want a defense mechanism to stay there unchecked. So then you start developing mechanisms where the other cells inside the blood vessel try to start, if you will, protecting the artery mm -hmm. from the immune system. And this begins the fatty cells where the monocytes come in. They're not normally present there in high amounts, but they're phagocytic cells. So being present now in high amounts in the blood vessel because of the reaction to the inflammation, they start gobbling up lipids and cholesterol. So cholesterol and lipids, yeah, those are real risk factors, but they're not the primary they're not the, reason. They're not the cause. But when they're there in high mm. amounts, these phagocytes, these monocytes will start gobbling up, up more, and then you go from the little fatty cells to the more visual fatty streak that's one of the first known pathological stage, stages of atherosclerosis, and then the whole situation continues. The other thing too, and this is something that was put out by Pauling and I believe Rath and Cameron, and is very logical in my mind, is that as you deplete the vitamin C in the blood vessel wall, one of the well-documented effects of vitamin C is to help you to make collagen, which is one of your most important structural proteins in the body. If you don't make enough collagen, you get physically weak structures. So as you get less and less collagen in this blood vessel wall, the wall is going to get hose, physically weaker. Like a hose. Would, okay, might do. yeah, you start, you start getting weak areas, little aneurysms develop. Mm -hmm. And it's felt that although it might be what you would say a poor substitute mm -hmm. for vitamin C, it nevertheless is a valid mechanism of compensation to start building up this plaque, if you will, mm -hmm. just to keep the blood vessel mm -hmm. stronger because it doesn't have enough collagen anymore. So it's a compensatory mechanism to try to keep the vessel intact. And obviously that has to be the number one mission. You don't want blood vessels to rupture mm -hmm. or then you, get, you lead to death very quickly. So if you're not getting the vitamin C in there, the body's got to do mm -hmm. something very interesting point that you're making so in other words we're, what we have come to uh, be told and, and many people believe that cholesterol is really the problem that it's causing this it really isn't it's it's it is, as you said it's a reaction to a whole cascade that begins with a with a shortage of the right amount of vitamin c mm -hmm. begins there and actually uh, potentially it would seem the next step maybe i'm wrong but if you if you would really would were to reduce your level of cholesterol in those situations without doing something else 
then you're going to worsen that the, the initial problem, the weakness that's there. Is that, is that's, that correct? That's actually a very good point because mm -hmm. it's also well established, but not well recognized mm -hmm. in the literature, is that cholesterol is a neutralizer of toxins. Mm -hmm. So as you have these higher level of toxins, the body makes more cholesterol to try to lessen the impact of the toxins to begin with mm -hmm. before they start having their negative effect inside the blood vessels. Mm -hmm. And it's also well established in the literature in mm -hmm. consistency with what you just said mm -hmm. is that all things being equal, if your cholesterol just starts dropping or is forced down with mm -hmm. prescription medication mm -hmm. to very low levels, the lower your cholesterol goes, the greater your chance of cancer. Mm -hmm. And this makes sense mm -hmm. if you think of the fact that cholesterol is a natural toxin inactivator. Mm -hmm. If it's a natural toxin inactivator and the body has been making more of it to compensate for this toxic activity and without addressing anything else you just knock the cholesterol down then you leave the body open to more toxic attack. And in a lot of different cancers we can show that increased exposure to toxins in different focal areas and tissue is carcinogenic. Mm -hmm.